I'm Greg with my history mystery blog. Imagine this. 500 years after your last breath has faded into silence, scientists are combing through your old combs for stray hairs, scrutinizing the ghostly whirls of your fingerprints on porcelain teacups and extracting traces of your saliva from the gum of yellowed envelopes. Creepy, undoubtedly. Yet this is not a dystopian fantasy. It is precisely what is happening right now to Leonardo da Vinci. Today we descend into the extraordinary chronicle of the international Leonardo DNA project. A 30-year odyssey dedicated to deciphering the genetic code of a man who lived centuries ahead of his time. Why does this matter now more than ever? Because only in our era have science and technology converged to allow us to peer into the very molecular essence of genius. And what we see in it may determine our future. As always, I've got my intellectual co-pilot, Brian. He is here to help me piece it all together. Brian, take the stage. Thank you for the great intro, Greg. Now sit back, relax, and let me take over. Let's dive into this mystery and uncover the secrets hidden for centuries. There is a delicious irony in this saga. Leonardo da Vinci, who sliced open cadavers to map the human form with a precision that would shame modern surgeons, has himself become the subject of posthumous dissection, not with scalpels but with pipettes and polymerase chains. The hunt began in the 1990s, when a consortium of scientists, historians and dreamers asked a deceptively simple question. Can we find Leonardo's DNA? Simple? Hardly. Leonardo died in 1519 at the Chateau de Clos Lucie in France. He was buried in the chapel of Saint Florentin in Amboise. But history, ever the vandal, had other plans. The French Revolution swept through like a storm of ideological fury, and revolutionaries, utterly indifferent to Renaissance genius, raised the chapel to the ground. Leonardo's bones, once laid to rest with quiet reverence, were scattered among the anonymous dead, mingling with strangers in a macabre communal ossuary. The greatest mind of his age, reduced to indistinguishable fragments in a pile of forgotten skeletons. Poetic, perhaps? Practical, for geneticists? Not in the slightest. Undeterred, the researchers pivoted. If they could not find Leonardo himself, perhaps they could find his kin. And so began a quest worthy of a Dan Brown novel, if Brown wrote with more archival rigor and fewer secret societies. Teams scoured ecclesiastical registers, tax rolls, notarial deeds from the 15th and 16th centuries, breathing in centuries of dust as they traced the da Vinci lineage back through time. What they discovered was a family tree so lush, so tangled with offspring, it resembled a Florentine opera more than a pedigree chart. Leonardo's father, Ser Piero da Vinci, a notary of some repute and prodigious appetites, fathered at least 12 children across four marriages. Leonardo himself was illegitimate, born to a peasant woman named Caterina. Yet it was precisely this web of half-siblings and cousins that preserved his genetic echo through the ages. Using the Y chromosome, a near-perfect molecular heirloom, passed unchanged from father to son, the team reconstructed an unbroken male line stretching back to 1331. 21 generations, over 400 individuals, a living tapestry woven across seven centuries of plague, war and papal intrigue. And then, the revelation. 15 living men in modern Italy are direct paternal descendants of the da Vinci clan. Some were farmers, others shopkeepers, None suspected they shared blood with the painter of the Mona Lisa. One can only imagine the look on their faces when told, Signore, you are kin to Leonardo. Did they check their bank accounts for unpaid royalties? Did they suddenly stand a little straighter, as if genius might be contagious? Now journey with me to Vinci, the small Tuscan town that gave Leonardo his name. There, nestled within the church of Santa Croce, lies the da Vinci family crypt. For centuries it sat undisturbed, just another stone vault among Italy's countless tombs. 
Locals passed it daily without a second glance, but to the DNA hunters it was a time capsule, sealed with bone and silence. When researchers finally opened the crypt, they found not a single burial chamber but layers, like a gothic lasagna of the dead, bones stacked upon bones, coffins nested within coffins, each stratum a century older than the last. Archaeologists now work with tweezers and reverence, piecing together identities from femurs and molars. Extracting DNA from such ancient remains is no trivial feat. Italian heat, humidity and time have ravaged these skeletons. DNA degrades like ink in rain, but modern science performs miracles from the enamel of teeth, from the dense marrow of femurs, scientists coax forth genetic whispers that have slumbered since the Medici ruled Florence. The plan? Compare this ancient DNA with samples from the 15 living descendants. A match would confirm beyond doubt that these bones belong to Leonardo's kin and from there reconstruct their faces, their diets, their diseases, we might finally learn what a 15th century Tuscan noble actually ate, spoiler. Not pizza, not carbonara, but roasted boar, spiced wine and bread so hard it could double as a weapon. But here's the twist. Among the remains are women, and while their bones are useless for tracing the Y chromosome, they carry mitochondrial DNA, the matrilineal thread. Could one of them be Caterina, Leonardo's mysterious mother? Some say she was a local peasant. Others whisper she was a Middle Eastern slave. If her DNA is found, we may finally solve the riddle of Leonardo's maternal origins and perhaps glimpse the genetic alchemy that produced such a mind. But the most audacious ambition of all? To recover Leonardo's own DNA, not from bones, but from the traces he left behind in life. Consider this. Leonardo left behind nearly 7,000 manuscript pages, scattered across museums from Paris to Madrid. On these pages, he sketched flying machines, dissected hearts, and mapped the flow of water with equations that predate calculus. And on many of them, he also left something far more intimate, himself. Microscopic flakes of skin, a stray hair caught in the binding, the faintest smear of saliva, perhaps from a finger licked to turn a page. Even his fingerprints pressed into wet paint as he blended shadows with his thumb, as on Lady with an Ermine, where a full thumbprint survives like a signature from beyond the grave. Alessandro Vezzosi, director of the Leonardo Heritage Association, speaks not of art, but of vision. We want to understand what lay behind his phenomenal eyesight, and he means it literally. Leonardo's anatomical drawings are so precise that modern surgeons still study them. His observations of bird flight anticipated aerodynamics by centuries. Was this merely skill? Or was his biology different? Could a genetic mutation have sharpened his visual cortex? Could his brain have processed light and motion in ways alien to ordinary humans? And what of his left-handed mirror writing, once thought to be a cipher against the Inquisition? but now suspected to reflect atypical brain lateralization. DNA might finally tell us, even his personal effects are under scrutiny. In an Italian museum, a wooden comb, possibly his, is examined for a single hair, one strand and the ghost speaks in nucleotides. And now, the discovery that sent tremors through the project, a charcoal drawing, found on the mantelpiece of an old house in Vinci. It depicts a creature neither dragon nor griffin, but something in between, horned, winged, clawed. Its musculature rendered with anatomical rigor that suggests the artist understood biomechanics better than most modern zoologists. Stylistic analysis points to Leonardo. He loved such beasts. In his notebooks, he even wrote a recipe for drawing a dragon. Take the head of a mastiff or setter, the eyes of a cat, the ears of a porcupine, the nose of a greyhound, the eyebrows of a lion, the wattles of an old rooster, and the neck of a tortoise. The man approached myth with the precision of a surgeon. This new sketch bears fingerprints. If DNA can be extracted and matched to other Leonardo-linked samples, it would be a sensation. 
auction houses are already dreaming of headlines, Lost, Leonardo, Dragon, Unearthed. Even if it proves to be the work of a cousin or apprentice, its presence in a Da Vinci-associated home is electrifying. Was it a talisman, a heraldic emblem, or simply a joke scrawled 500 years ago by someone who never imagined we'd be watching? Meanwhile, the project has pinpointed seven ancestral homes and two castles tied to the family. One was Leonardo's Florentine residence, where he apprenticed under Verrocchio and painted his first masterpieces. Today it's an ordinary apartment, its tenants likely unaware they sleep where genius once dreamed of flying machines. Though knowing Italians, they've probably already hung a plaque and charged $50 for guided tours. What else might DNA reveal? His cause of death, for one? Officially, Leonardo died of a stroke on May 2nd, 1519, at 67, an impressive age for the era. But years earlier, his right hand had grown paralyzed. For most artists, this would be career-ending. But Leonardo, being left-handed, adapted, shifting from painting to pure science. Modern neurologists suspect not one stroke, but a series of micro-infarctions, or perhaps Parkinson's. His DNA could show genetic predispositions to neurodegenerative disease or to conditions that enhanced his mind. Consider this. Many geniuses exhibit neurological atypicalities. Was Leonardo on the autism spectrum? His hyperfocus, his obsession with detail, his inability to finish projects all fit the profile. His legendary polyphasic sleep, 15 minutes every four hours, defies biological norms, unless he carried a rare mutation affecting circadian rhythms, and his memory, eidetic. He drew human anatomy from memory after hurried dissections with no refrigeration to preserve corpses. Such memory correlates with hippocampal structure, shaped in part by genes. Then there's synesthesia, the blending of senses. In his notes, Leonardo wrote of sounds shaping water, of colors singing in harmony. Once dismissed as poetic flourish, these may be literal perceptions. Synesthesia is hereditary. If any of the 15 descendants experience it, the case grows stronger. And now, the revelation I promised. In 2016, Italian researchers analyzed the finger ratios in Leonardo's self-portraits. They found an unusually high ratio of ring finger to index finger a marker of elevated prenatal testosterone. This hormone, flooding the fetal brain, enhances spatial reasoning, mathematical intuition, and pattern recognition. It may also fuel aggression, but Leonardo, ever the alchemist, transmuted that energy into creation. If DNA confirms this hormonal signature, we may finally have a scientific answer to the oldest question of all. Why was Leonardo Leonardo? Not divine inspiration, not mystical destiny, but biology, rare, precise, and exquisitely tuned. The Leonardo DNA project continues. Years of analysis lie ahead, but already we stand at the threshold of a new understanding. Genius is not magic, it is matter, it is code. And that leads to a final haunting question, one that no longer belongs to history, but to our future. If you could edit your child's genome to grant them Leonardo's mind, would you? Even if it meant they might never finish what they started. Even if it meant they'd see the world so differently. No one would understand them. Even if it meant they'd die alone, misunderstood, their bones lost to revolution. Because with CRISPR and gene editing, this is no longer fantasy. It is coming. Soon. A new Leonardo. Not born of chance, but designed. Exciting or terrifying. You decide. And that's a wrap for today. We hope this presentation was both helpful and inspiring, and that it sparked your curiosity about astrology. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to check out more of our podcast. We've got plenty more celestial wisdom coming your way. Got a topic you're dying to explore? Let us know. It'll be my pleasure to dive into it in a future video and answer all your burning questions. Till then, stay curious, stay cosmic, and live your best, most aligned life.